There's a lot of anger in the Magic community right now surrounding the Commander Legends pre-release. And that anger isn't just coming from the player base. It's actually coming from LGSs who feel let down by this as well. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about the Commander Legends pre-release weekend that just went on and the surrounding discontent in the Magic community as a result of it. So let's lay out what happened. First of all, we just had the Commander pre-release happen. That was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where people come out, have a good time, try out the new cards. And I have to say, in terms of the way the event actually functioned, at least where I am, it went quite well. There were a ton of people enjoying the cards. Seems like pretty much all the product got used up in the way it was intended for, which is always nice. So it really just felt like almost old school. Yeah, admittedly, you have to do, we gotta stay a certain distance from each other, all that kind of stuff. But it really felt like normal old school times where it was just a bunch of people having fun. Four people want to play Commander, sit down. Here's your area over here. Four people over here. It's not like, it's not like the old days where, you know, there was like 60 people playing Magic. The times are what they are. But either way, it felt nice. The experience of the event itself was good, at least where I am. But in other parts of Canada and America, and maybe even other places as well, there's some serious discontent about the way things went down. And part of that is because of a lack of clear information about what's going on. Now, under normal circumstances, you might look at the situation and say that the stores carry a tiny little bit of blame, but honestly, with the way things boiled down and the timing of everything, I can't really ultimately say that, although some people might technically try to say that. I'm just trying to cover my bases. So let me lay it out for you. Here's how it went down. Commander Legends was originally supposed to be released when we got double masters, okay? Now that's a big deal. This is part of what's throwing everything off. To understand why this matters, you have to understand that stores, like when the pre-release weekend showed up, a bunch of people found out, wait, we're not gonna get to do pre-release the way that we want to? No, why, what happened? Oh, you don't have enough product? Wait, what's going on? They didn't send you pre-release kits, wait. Wizards didn't send out pre-release kits for a pre-release? What's going on? And the LGS is all, Rah! they didn't send us, like there's a, a bunch, honestly. I've gotten enough reports of this on top of people being concerned about supply issues. You know what I mean? I was just checking out Tragic MTG's video talking about supply issues for Commander Legends where he thinks that there might not be enough to go around. And I realized that part of that mentality is based on the fact that stores weren't given the incorrect information. That's not the case. They just weren't, ha they didn't have things explained to them in a clear enough fashion. So what happened is a bunch of LGSs ended up expecting pre-release kits to arrive for Commander Legends when there were never going to be pre-release kits. So a bunch of stores, they're getting in these booster boxes and they think they're getting in pre-release kits. So in their mind, this pre-release works like every other pre-release. We have the pre-release kits to play with and we have the boxes to sell at pre-release time, right? Like every pre-release, the stores get X number of booster boxes that they're allowed to sell that weekend and then the stuff normally goes fully on sale the week after, right? So if that's what you're used to, then it makes sense. You take a bunch of pre-orders for the Commander Legends boxes, the pre-release kits, all that stuff, right? Like, and then the day comes and all of a sudden you're like, wait, in the stuff they ship, there's no pre-release kits and we just have these boxes. We have to use the boxes we were gonna sell to other people for the event now? Well, what am I supposed to do? I've massively oversold this and there's no way to, to effectively run my events and meet the needs. So now I have to cancel all these box orders or tell people there's not gonna be a pre-release because of no pre-release kits. I've heard of multiple examples of these different scenarios. One store had to say to the people who were gonna buy booster boxes, can't sell you the booster boxes, Wizards didn't send us pre-release kits, so we have to use the boxes for the event. And then other examples where they go, they only sent us the boxes to sell, so we've sold those and we have no pre-release kits, there'll be no pre-release event. But the thing is, is they were never told they were gonna get pre-release kits for Commander Legends. This was an assumption that was made and not completely unfairly. But at the same time, there is the aspect of here's how it normally works. 
Wizards puts out like a summer innovation set. It shows up like mid-year-ish, right? And we've had a whole bunch of different variations. You have your like unsets, conspiracy. Uh, this, this year they threw double masters out even though Commander Legends was supposed to be that set. Remember that. Commander Legends was supposed to be that middle of the year innovation set. These middle of the year innovation sets don't have pre-release kits. They never have, right? So every one of those events is just grab some booster packs from the display. Like look when Modern Horizons came out, right? Same thing. There were no pre-release kits. They just send out boxes and you use the existing property, right? It's just a, here you go, use that. We're not making pre-release kits for this because it's not worth it. They only make pre-release kits for their like premier standard set releases. Anything that's not specifically one of those standard set releases does not get pre-release kits. But the thing is, like I said, these are mid-year. Now, at some point in the beginning of this year, Wizards Management, they decided that Commander Legends had to be pushed to the end of the year. I don't know if that's because they knew it was a banger product and they were gonna sell a bunch of it, or there was a logistical nightmare of printing it because Commander Legends comes in 20 card draft packs, right? So this is a completely different product just from the dimensions and everything as well. So it's unknown why the delay happened, but it was stated specifically in a Mark Rosewater article that the upper management made that choice and they quickly scrambled to get Double Masters slapped together and put out there as the innovation set. Now, when we had the Double Masters, you have the release week or pre-release weekend, you can play in events, but there was no kits, right? So Commander Legends was supposed to come out then. It was supposed to be the middle of the year. We're not adding any pre-release kit set, but it gets shoved to the end of the, end of the year, but it's still considered an innovation set. Like it's not considered a standard release. So there will be no pre-release kits. And when they put out the registration information for signing up to get all of your products and everything like that and talking about the pre-release, like all of this was sent out in August. And it did say in the WPN information, WPN is the Wizards Play Network. This is the web page that people who buy from Wizards of the Coast, the people who are actually, like the LGS owners are a part of this network. And the WPN documentation that was sent out says, you know, you get your, everybody gets three booster packs. Now, there's no language specifically in there stating there will be no pre-release kits, just use booster packs out of the boxes, right? That's not clearly stated anywhere. So most, most likely what happened is they already had the document drawn up for it, right? Ready to go for like mid-year release. And then everything got changed. So they just changed the dates on the document, set it aside. And then when it came time to actually start taking orders, put it out for like the, the pre-release setup and all this kind of stuff, they just didn't update it because they didn't real. They probably didn't realize, right? I mean, ultimately, Wizards of the Coast didn't realize, and that's that's on them. This is all of the fallout is because they didn't take the extra effort to make sure that it was very clear to all LGS owners, the distributors, all these people that yo, there won't be pre-release kits. This information should have been firmly put out there because it's fine to go, hey, you know what? This is our summer innovation set. Every every year, mid-year, we put out a set where we don't do pre-release kits. You should be kind of used to this rhythm. Well, that's not what happened. They moved that and shoved in another stopgap set. So everybody's brain is going to go, okay, we've had our mid-year no pre-release kit set. And so the store owners are sitting there expecting the pre-release kits. So this is a situation where Wizards has not effectively communicated what needed to be communicated. And as a result, this is overall damaging to their brand where it leaves LGS, like there are multiple LGS owners out there now who are blaming Wizards for this because Wizards didn't do an effective job of giving them the information. They didn't send out a specific email or whatever. I'm guessing not every LGS goes to every single WPN page to read it because it's just a tiny little thing. And most of the time it's just, um like a rinse and repeat sort of thing. So when you have something out of the ordinary, you need to take steps that are out of the ordinary to make sure that the people are informed because now these LGS owners, they all feel hosed, right? They feel like basically, look, wizards, you didn't tell me this. You didn't like, there's some of them that don't even know the reality of the situation right now and still think wizards just didn't send them pre-release kits. So you've got a bunch of store owners who think wizards has basically just bent them over and said, this is your problem, right? And so then they have to deal with all these customers. And of course, every customer that gets told, 
Wizards didn't do X. Wizards didn't send me the pre-release kits or whatever. Well, that doesn't look good on the brand, does it? That sours people's view towards Wizards of the Coast. Now they feel like they've been denied a pre-release experience because Wizards couldn't be bothered to print the stuff. Like, you're gonna get me all hyped for this? You're gonna get me all excited for your product and then you're not gonna send it out? But that wasn't even the case, right? The product was sent out, but because things weren't clearly communicated, we have this fallout where store owners are angry, players are angry, and it's completely understandable. Like, I get why they're frustrated. This is a miscommunication, and it seems like this is a really easily avoidable one, too. We're not looking at a scenario like we did with the VIP boxes, where they straight out told us, yes, you can get two Mythic box toppers, when that was literally impossible. Like, it's not like they lied to us. I went and looked straight up at the multiple WPN posts, and I'm like, okay, the information is here, where it's like, it clearly says, use three packs. But it also doesn't say we won't be sending those out in pre-release kits. And because Wizards shifted the whole schedule, it's their responsibility to make sure that any confusion that surrounds changes they have to make to the release schedule is clearly communicated to their retail partners, right? Like, these are people who are like, uh, uh, you think of an LGS and you think of some, like an organization, a store that has direct contact with Wizards of the Coast. They've got the official stamp. They're part of the WPM. They can run official Wizards events. They're the place that get to do the pre-releases, all these special events. And now all of a sudden they're just, oh, Wizards just go, nah, your store is whatever. So the, 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 the overall fallout from this is something that was completely avoidable. And in all honesty, uh, the reason it's taken me so long to make this video is I thought the information would get out there and by the end of the pre-release weekend that the anger over the scenario would have diminished and people would be more comfortable. But there's a bunch of people out there just complaining, people who didn't actually even get to engage in pre-releases who are really frustrated. So I figured if I put the information out there, you'd understand that... The, like the full scenario where there's a there's a layer of like, okay, this is Wizards' fault, but it's not Wizards' fault because they didn't send pre-release kits. It's Wizards' fault because they didn't clearly communicate that pre-release kits weren't going to be arriving because this was being treated exactly the same as a mid-year innovation set, even though it's being released late year like this. So ultimately Wizards holds the blame for this. It is unfortunate that a bunch of people had to miss out on pre-releases or ended up just being unhappy because of it. Because at the end of the day, yeah, what do we want to do? We all just want to have good time with our, uh, with our cardboard rectangles, right? And speaking of cardboard rectangles, I actually have reviewed a brand new, not like brand new to, you, to the world, but brand new to me, card game called Exodus. I reviewed that over on my other channel. It's a funky little game. It's it's faster than magic. It's got its own little charm to it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to that up here at the end of the video for you. So that's all I really have to say. If you like what I'm doing, like, comment, subscribe. It's all great for the channel. Sharing videos around really helps too. If you love what I'm doing, jump on my Patreon and be like one of these lovely people whose names scroll by me. Other than that, thanks for coming, my friends. I will see you all very soon.